guys, it's your Tech Girl Mary and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Yes, tama ang napanood nyo. The video before this intro is all shot by the Oppo Reno 10 Pro plus 5G. Yes, ang haba ng pangalan ng phone na to, pero alam nyo, masaya pa rin ako dahil bihira sa Oppo na nagdadala sila nung top of the line ng kanilang Reno series. Hindi lang top of the line guys, ang dinala nila dito sa Pilipinas, kung hindi, yung tatlo mismo. Alright, yung Oppo Reno guys, alam naman nating lahat, is not new sa premium smartphone space even before the pandemic. Nakita rin natin yung iba't ibang interesting designs such as the original Find X. Meron din tayo ng Oppo Reno 2 which they introduced yung shark fin style pop-up camera. At yung pinaka-latest nga nila na flagship phone ngayon is the Oppo Find X6 Pro. Kung nakafollow kayo guys sa social media account ko, dinala ko nga itong smartphone na to sa Bali, Indonesia. Sa Bali din guys, yung setting ng video footages na nakita nyo sa intro ng video na to. So magta-throwback muna tayo. A month ago, we went there for the APAC Summit. And yung main agenda ng trip na yun is of course to explore more of what Bali, Indonesia is. And of course, para rin gamitin yung bago nilang Oppo Find X6 Pro and malaman kung ano pa yung kanyang capabilities. So those who doesn't know yet, yung Find X guys, yung pinaka-flagship series ng Oppo na alam ko hindi nila dinadala dito sa Pilipinas. Pero ito talaga yung pinaka-inaabangan ko sa kanila na hopefully ay ma-release nila globally para mas malaki yung chance na madala nga ito sa mga Southeast Asian countries katulad nitong ating bansang Pilipinas. So yes, itong phone talaga na to, yung rason kung bakit ako nagpunta ng Bali, Indonesia, guys. Pero, since nandun na rin naman ako, syempre, dinala ko na rin yung aking Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus 5G para naman din makapag ako ng maraming photos and videos para nga dito sa gagawin kong full review. Okay, so the Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus comes in two finishes. Meron tayo ng glossy purple, which is what I have. And of course, the silvery gray, which is actually medyo mas black siyang tignan. I have to say, maganda in fairness yung pagka-purple nitong Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus. Yun nga lang talaga, guys. Coming from the name itself, a glossy, it really is a fingerprint magnet. At isa sa mga mapapansin nyo dito sa phone na to is, syempre, yung kanyang pill-shaped camera module. Which is, I think, a bold choice for Oppo. Kaya nung unang nakita ko yung design ng phone na to, talagang napa-double take ako, guys. Kasi hindi naman din very common ang pill-shaped camera setup sa mga smartphones ngayon. I also noticed na isolated yung kanyang dedicated telephoto camera from the rest. During the Bali trip, I have to say, this camera module really took some getting used to. Eventually, guys, it grew on me naman din. I guess mas natatalo pa rin siya nung kulay ng phone, which really stole my heart. It also has the curves in all the right places. Kaya kapag ito ay nahawakan, it feels really great. Ganito yung feeling na namimiss ko sa mga smartphones na naglalabasan ngayon na merong squared or flat edge design. Okay. Cameras. Dito na talaga guys, papasok yung capability ng smartphone na to. Hindi ka naman tadadalan guys sa Bali kung hindi naman din maganda yung performance ng camera and videos niya. In fairness, it gave me an almost flagship camera capabilities for a non-flagship phone. Para kasi sa akin guys, this phone is still not counted as a flagship device, premium mid-range phone pwede pa. Again, uulitin ko ang flagship phone kasi or flagship series na meron ng Oppo ay itong kanilang Find X series. Alright, on paper guys, itong Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus features a 50 megapixel Sony IMX890 sensor as its primary camera. Meron din itong OIS or optical image stabilization. We also have a 64 megapixel telephoto lens that also has an OIS. And lastly, we got an 8 megapixel Sony IMX355 ultra wide camera. Unahin natin syempre yung para yung camera ng phone na to. 
Nung pumunta kami ng Bali guys, napansan ko, it really excels in capturing light and delivering excellent picture quality. Malaking tulong talaga ang pagkakaroon ng optical image stabilization sa isang smartphone. Even if shaky yung kamay nyo or meron tayong moving objects, hindi magbo-blur yung images. And for an Android device, in fairness, it also has the ability to capture breathtaking landscapes while preserving pa rin yung intricate elements niya. Alam naman natin lahat na flagship phone nila yung Oppo Find X6 Pro, pero I also did a bit of comparison. Mga tatlo or dalawang pictures lang naman to na obviously just to prove guys na hindi masyadong nalalayo yung picture quality na meron tayo dito sa Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus. Anyway, aside dito, isa sa mga aspeto na deserve ng special mention ay yung kanyang 64 megapixels telephoto portrait lens. Obviously, nilagay ng Oppo itong telephoto lens for, of course, better portrait photography na rin. It offers 3 times optical zoom and kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, it is also equipped with an OIS. Kung mapapansin nyo sa mga photos ay shot in Bali, Indonesia. In fairness, guys, I was really impressed sa kanyang portrait shots, especially yung 3 times zoom niya. It really came handy during then nung dance performance na pinapanood namin dahil medyo malayo yung aming upuan. I was able to get a great detail, especially doon sa ating fire dancers. The ability to zoom in while maintaining pa rin yung image quality niya is for me a significant advantage lalo na sa kanyang mga competitors. I was also able to capture close-up portrait shots without compromising yung sharpness and accuracy. For low-light photography, indeed it's more than acceptable para sa presyo na meron siya. Actually, yung mga photos taken by its primary camera is about as good in the night as it is in the day. I guess having one of the the best flagship chipset really helps when it comes to toning down the noise level without over-processing yung ating mga photos. Hindi lang yon define din yung kanyang shadows which is what most of us want naman talaga sa mga low-light photos. Next, isa sa mga na-impress talaga ako bukod sa kanyang dedicated telephoto lens is of course the 32 megapixels selfie camera. The selfie camera is also pro level. Kahit na gabi na, ultra clear pa rin guys yung mga photos natin. Nakikip pa rin niya in focus yung subject which is most of the time yung mukha ko and the background is slightly blurred which gives the selfies a more aesthetic look. Hindi lang yan guys, if we were to look at sa kanyang camera user interface when taking selfies, na-appreciate ko na meron siyang tatlong zoom options. We got 0.8 times kung gusto nyo ng group selfies. We also got the 1 times for the usual focal length and of course, 2 times kung gusto nyo ng mas malapit na shot, especially yung mga mahilig dito na magpakita ng kanilang mga makeup. So, portrait mode, meron tayong dalawang zooming capabilities. We got 0.8 times and 1 times naman. Now, let's talk about the video capability. Okay, specs-wise, it is capable of shooting 4K resolution. This is for the 1 times and the 3 times telephoto lens. And even if kung gusto nyo mag-zoom digitally up to 6 times. Now, for the ultra-wide, this is only capped at 1080p resolution. And sadly, even the front camera guys is only capable of 1080p. But yes, for the most part, I can say naman na usable pa rin yung mga footages. But the rest of the video footages na nakikita niya right now, which is again shot by the Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus. It is indeed very stable even if we use pa yung kanyang telephoto lens. Kasi nga again, both these cameras guys has an optical image stabilization which is I have to say malaking tulong even if tayo ay shoot in 4K. Even if hindi naka-turn on yung kanyang ultra steady option. Now for its overall performance. Guys, dito naman, papasok na lahat actually. Yung display niya, yung chipset na meron siya, kung sulit ba for its price. Siyempre, yung hardware software optimization and even its battery and charging capabilities. To those who doesn't know yet, itong Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus 5G is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset. Which may not be this year's flagship chipset. Pero again guys, we all know how fast and capable this processor is. Built din ito on a 4 nanometer processor and ito ay 30% more powerful and fast 
than its predecessor na 8th Gen 1. I have to say so far, yung experience is fast, smooth, and efficient. Do take note guys, isang buwan ko na po halos nagagamit itong smartphone na to. This is whether while gaming, performing heavy duty tasks, even no, taking photos under direct sunlight, hindi naman din guys na apektuhan at umiinit yung smartphone. And uh, do take note, it also comes with a 12 gig built-in physical RAM. Kayang-kaya gumamit ng up to 20 applications guys running simultaneously. Now, it may not be expandable via micro SD card, pero this phone has a 256 gig onboard storage. Which is, for me, you can still store whatever you want to, even for those high gig games. Now, I know most mid-range or premium mid-range smartphones comes with a 5,000 mAh of battery capacity. When I started using this device for the past few weeks, naramdaman ko guys na yes, the battery size might be smaller. Again, it's 4,700. But yung drainage rate niya guys is slower as well. Again guys, when I was in Bali, literal na ang aga naming umalis ng hotel and gabi na kami pabalik and I am still left with almost 15 to 20% of battery. Now, on a more good news, every time na syempre babalik kami ng hotel para mag-charge na rin ng phone at syempre magpahinga at matulog, hindi naging problema yung charging speed niya. We were able to charge this phone from 0 to 100% in less than 30 minutes which means guys, kahit na 20 minutes lang ako mag-charge, itong smartphone na to is still enough for more than half a day of usage. And this is because of its 100 watts SuperVoke charging capability. Now for its display. Yes, obviously guys, curved yung meron tayo sa kanya and to be exact, it's a 3D curved panel. I always tell you, hindi ako biggest fan ng mga curved displays and I will always be consistent to that. Pero ang kinaganda lang talaga ng pagkakaroon ng curved OLED panel guys is really yung very narrow bezels niya. It also gives the best borderless look and completes the overall lightweight design aesthetic. To be exact, this phone is only 8.28mm thin. Now, ignoring yung mga na-experience ko dito sa phone na to from the past few weeks, like yung kanyang slippery material, bloatware, which is hindi pa rin nawawala hanggang ngayon, especially sa mga Android devices. And of course, last but not the least, I have to say, medyo may kamahalan yung device. But considering that this phone has a nice audio setup, 10-bit full HD plus display, a Corning Gorilla Glass 5 panel, and a Dragon Trail 2 coating on its display, to me, it's something really worth considering. The Reno 10 Pro Plus 5G can still be a perfect photography companion for all your needs. Lalo na if kailangan nyo ng cellphone na kaya maglast sa inyo all day, gives the fast and best performance. A phone that will allow us to capture all the important moments of our life without sacrificing the quality, then this phone can really be a good option for you. Uulitin ko, iniskip din kasi nila yung Oppo Reno 9, which is why kahit pa paano yung mga naka Oppo Reno 8 might find the upgrade very tempting this time. So yes, that's basically it para sa ating Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus full review. Uulitin ko guys, if feature pa natin yung ibang phones ng series na to dahil meron pa tayong dalawa on the following days. Huwag niyong kalimutan guys mag-subscribe and i-follow ako sa mga social media accounts. Again, it's your tech girl Mary and see you on our next video. Bye!